Hi there, my name is Bipin Chitkara. In this clipping, we would be exploring the subject of boiler efficiency. Specifically, how do we improve the efficiency of a boiler? Why the subject is important is because, firstly, there are various different kinds of solid fuel fired boilers. The types of fuel vary, uh, the properties of the fuel vary and how combustion actually takes place in these boilers also varies. If you take a fluidized bed combustion boiler, the efficiency promised by the boiler manufacturer is 82% with the air preheater and the water preheater included. But when you really run the boiler, typical average efficiency for these boilers is 63%. So why is the gap? On one hand, there is a promise of 82% while the operating efficiency is 63%. So what is the reason for this gap? Can the gap be bridged? One benchmark that is used to measure the efficiency is the steam to fuel ratio. The steam to fuel ratio is the most practical method of working out the boiler efficiency. Steam to fuel ratio is simply the ratio between the steam generated to the fuel burnt. The higher the steam to fuel ratio, the higher is the boiler efficiency. The lower the steam to fuel ratio, the lower is the boiler efficiency. When you determine the boiler efficiency using the steam to fuel ratio, it firstly tells you what the efficiency of the boiler is. It allows you to know whether your efficiency is near to the desired efficiency or there is a huge gap. It also allows you to know what the trends are, whether the efficiency is improving or whether the efficiency is on a decline. Another method of determining the boiler efficiency is by actually working out all the losses that are happening in a boiler and then 100% minus the sum of all losses would give you the efficiency of the boiler. Now both the methods give you the efficiency of the boiler. In the second method to calculate the boiler efficiency you need to calculate all the losses and when you have the breakup of the losses you know exactly which loss is contributing in a bigger way to the boiler inefficiency and which loss really should not be focused upon. So it tells you which are the areas to focus upon and by focusing upon those specific areas one can bring about a desired improvement in the operating efficiency of a boiler. Now the second method finds approval by a lot of agencies, the BS 845 has recognized this method as the true scientific method of working out the boiler efficiency. We have five to six different type of losses that happen in a boiler and these losses are number one the stack loss, then you have the unburnt loss, you have enthalpy loss, blowdown loss, radiation loss. The first loss that we spoke about is the stack loss. Stack loss happens because of high temperature flue gases leaving the stack carrying away lot of heat energy with them. Now there are two reasons for a high stack loss. One is excess air and one is the temperature of the flue gases itself. These two things combine to form the stack loss. When combustion takes place in a boiler, the carbon reacts with oxygen in the air to form carbon dioxide and along with it, it releases heat and light. Now for carbon to completely burn, a certain amount of air is required. That is basically the stoichiometric air to fuel ratio. In practice, if we supply the stoichiometric air, it is not possible that the carbon fully combusts. This is because in the time available for combustion in a boiler, it is impossible that every molecule of oxygen gets one molecule of carbon and both of them combust. So in practice, a certain amount of excess air is required. Now that excess air could be 15%, it could be 20%, it could be 25%. That depends on the kind of fuel and the kind of the boiler. The excess air and the quantity of oxygen present in the flue gases have a direct correlation. There is a formula that links both of them together and the formula is excess air equals 
21 divided by 21 minus oxygen this is the excess air factor an excess air factor of 1.2 indicates that 20 percent excess air is present Therefore, knowing the oxygen percentage in the flue gas is the first stage. Apart from the oxygen, the other thing that needs to be measured in the flue gases is the temperature of the flue gases. It is important that the excess air and the temperature of the flue gases both be brought to the bare minimum that is required for complete and efficient combustion. Now the air that goes into a boiler for combustion comes from two or three sources. The FD fan supplies the combustion air. The quantity of air that goes into the boiler for combustion is really important. This quantity of air determines whether the combustion happens efficiently or not. It is this combustion air which is supplied by the FD fan which participates in the combustion process getting converted into carbon dioxide and eventually passing out as flue gases from the chimney. By measuring the oxygen in the flue gases, one can know whether the amount of air that is supplied is right or not. If the oxygen percentage exceeds 6%, it is an indication that excess air is being supplied for the combustion process and thereby resulting into a higher stack loss. Now this excess air can be controlled by either adjusting the speed of the FD fan or by doing the adjustment in the damper settings. Both the methods are equally good and equally well accepted. Now the speed of the FD fan again can be reduced by two methods. One is by using a potentiometer and one is by using a variable frequency drive. Variable frequency drives or variable speed drives as they are called are now increasingly becoming popular as a tool to alter the FD fan speed. One additional advantage that can be obtained by using a variable frequency drive is that some amount of power saving also happens and many times this power saving is substantial. A 2% increase in stack oxygen leads to a 1% increase in fuel consumption. By controlling the excess air, one can improve the boiler efficiency and keep it to the optimal levels. The second thing that is to be controlled is the stack temperature. As a thumb rule, every 20 degree increase in stack temperature results in a 1% loss of efficiency. So it is very important that the stack temperature be not allowed to rise beyond a certain level. For this stack temperature monitoring is essential. In an FD fan, it has often been observed that the variable frequency drive operates at a frequency of about 35 or 36 hertz against 50 hertz. And that results in a substantial power saving of about 30 to 40 percent in the power consumption of the FD fan. Just by monitoring these two parameters, which is the stack oxygen and the stack temperature, one can bring about substantial reduction in the stack loss. Now let us look at unburnt losses. Unburnt losses are the losses that happen due to the carbon in the fuel not getting properly burnt, which means that the carbon that is there in the fuel does not burn and comes out of the boiler either in the form of carbon in fly ash or in the form of carbon monoxide in the flue gases. If one looks at the three T's of combustion which are turbulence, time and temperature. Now for proper combustion there should be enough turbulence to allow proper mixing of the fuel and the air. Once that is achieved enough time must be given so that the combustion process is indeed complete. Now the defined range for a furnace draft is between minus 2 to minus 5 mm water column. If the furnace draft or the furnace pressure goes further into the negative zone, that is it goes to say minus 7, minus 8, minus 9 mm WC levels, it means that the ID fan is sucking combustion gases more quickly and throwing them out of the stack. 
it is not allowing enough time for complete combustion to take place firstly and secondly for the combustion gases to transfer the heat inside the boiler. So therefore, the furnace pressure has to be brought down to levels in between minus 2 to minus 5 mmwc. In this band, there is enough time for complete combustion to take place as well as for the combustion gases to transfer the heat completely. It is really important that a furnace pressure transmitter gives the readings of the furnace pressure on a continuous basis and thereby the boiler operator looking at these readings alters the ID fan speed in such a way that the furnace pressure is maintained between minus 2 to minus 5 mm Wc. The other way of controlling the furnace pressure is by doing the adjustment on the damper provided at the ID fan. Now the ID fan in a boiler is a very huge fan and draws a lot of power. So often we find that a variable frequency drive is fitted on an ID fan. So it becomes very easy to vary the speed of the ID fan if required. So what needs to be done is a continuous monitoring of the furnace pressure needs to be done. Continuous monitoring of the furnace pressure enables one take corrective action in terms of adjusting the speed of the ID fan. In case a VFD is not provided, one can look at the damper settings. Adjusting and changing the damper settings also enables keep the furnace pressure within the desired limits. If the furnace pressure is more on the positive side approaching to minus 1 or 0 levels, one has to then open the damper further. If the damper is fully open, then there is no option but to increase the ID fan speed. Often it is found that for two or three different loads that exist in a plant, two or three different settings may be required. Frequent changes in settings are not required. So maybe one or two different kinds of settings suffice for the entire operation of the plant. Now, in a plant, the steam load generally varies. So as the steam load varies, the fuel feed rate also has to be varied to suit the steam demand. As the fuel feed rate varies, one has to also correspondingly increase or decrease the FD fan air that is being supplied and the air that is sucked by the ID fan. Therefore, one has to look at a set of readings comprising the steam load, the steam pressure, the furnace pressure, the oxygen level and the stack temperature. Looking at all this data enables one to determine the exact fuel feed rate. Once the fuel feed rate is determined, the exact amount of air that is supplied for combustion by the FD fan can be determined and those levels can be set. Once that is set, using the furnace pressure as an input, one can fix the speed of the ID fan or adjust the position of the dampers of the ID fan and thus a balanced draft has to be created to ensure that the furnace is always under a negative pressure. So looking at the stack oxygen or the furnace pressure or the steam pressure or the stack temperature in isolation is meaningless. One has to look at all this data in its entire coherence and then only can one arrive at what the optimal settings for a particular load would be. One should not have too many different fuel feed rates as too much fluctuation in the fuel feed rate can increase the unburnt losses. So two or three different fuel feed rates for different plant loads is fine, but frequent changes in the fuel feed rate should always be avoided. Now we come to the third kind of loss which is the enthalpy loss. Hydrogen is an integral part of almost every kind of fuel. When this hydrogen in the fuel combines with the oxygen present in the combustion air, it forms H2O. This H2O uses the heat that is generated in the combustion to vaporize itself. Additionally, there is some amount of moisture that is present in the fuel. 
Now this moisture enters the combustion process in liquid form and goes out of the stack along with the flue gases in vapor form. So this H2O also uses some amount of heat that is generated in the combustion process. The heat that is being used by the H2O to vaporize itself and go out of the stack along with the flue gases at the temperature of the flue gases is basically the enthalpy loss. And the other type of loss is called the blowdown loss. For every boiler, there is a defined limit of the allowable TDS in the boiler drum. The boiler feed water has a certain TDS. Now when steam is being generated from the boiler, the TDS content in the boiler drum starts to increase. Therefore, some amount of the high TDS water needs to be removed from the boiler drum. This removal of high TDS water from the boiler is called blowdown. By doing boiler blowdown, one is able to maintain the TDS in the boiler drum to its optimal desired levels. Now what happens in the process of blowdown is that most of the time the blowdown is done manually. Therefore, the exact amount of blowdown that is required is never done. Many times excess blowdown is done and many times a suboptimal blowdown is done. Both these are harmful. An excess amount of blowdown contributes to the blowdown loss. An automatic blowdown control system senses the actual TDS in the boiler drum and does the blowdown only when it is required. So when the TDS levels in the boiler go beyond the desired levels, the blowdown valve opens and brings down the TDS to the desired levels. High TDS levels in the boiler drum not only cause scaling within the boiler drum and on the boiler tubes, but these scale particles also get carried away with the steam and form deposits on the downstream equipment and piping. High TDS levels in the boiler drum also result in moisture carryover, which means that the steam coming out of the boiler has a high moisture content and this is detrimental to the equipment downstream of the boiler. It not only damages the equipment downstream of the boiler, it also results in poor heat transfer in the process equipment and is often a cause of high steam consumption apart from the problems of water hammer etc that it causes. Typically the use of an automatic blowdown control system helps cut down the boiler losses by 0.5 percent. One more type of loss that is typically seen is the on off losses. Now what are these on off losses? When the boiler drum pressure reaches its highest level, it cuts off the fuel supply thereby switching off the entire boiler. Now when the steam pressure reaches the lower level, the boiler again gets on. Each time the boiler goes into an on off mode, it brings about a destabilization in the combustion. A cumulative effect of lot of on off cycles is a high inefficiency in the boiler. So what needs to be done? The number of on-off cycles needs to be reduced to a bare minimum. Correct mapping of the fuel feed rate is essential in reducing the number of on-off losses. More often than not, it is a high fuel feed rate which is the major culprit. A high fuel feed rate increases the number of on-off cycles that happen in the boiler. Optimizing the fuel feed rate can go a long way in reducing the number of on-off cycles happening in the boiler. Some boiler efficiency thumb rules. A 2% reduction in stack oxygen brings about a 1% increase in the boiler efficiency. A 20 degree increase in stack temperature increases fuel consumption by 1%. A 1 ton reduction in coal consumption reduces the CO2 emissions by 2.8 tons. Improving feed water temperature by 6 degrees reduces fuel consumption by 1%. Feed water temperature is another parameter that affects the steam to fuel ratio or the fuel consumption in a boiler. 
every 6 degree increase in feed water temperature reduces the fuel consumption by 1 percent. So what affects the feed water temperature? There are three or four factors that determine what the feed water temperature should be. The condensate recovery factor is one of the most important factors. Apart from this, the feed water tank level, the size of the feed water tank, the insulation levels of the feed water tank, all these play a major role in determining the feed water temperature. The process of improvement in feed water temperature starts with measuring the feed water temperature and understanding the causes of the low feed water temperature. Now why should one look at boiler efficiency? If you look at the overall cost of ownership of a boiler, the fuel cost is the major component. The capital cost of the boiler and the maintenance cost of the boiler and all are a very small component. And it is the fuel costs year on year that form the major cost of operation and ownership of a boiler. So I hope this small video has brought about some enlightenment in the area of boiler efficiency. And I also sincerely hope that all of you really enjoyed this. Thanks for your time. Goodbye.